Hey, soul survivors, we are talking about the healing journey. And this is in response to a lady who has done fantastic. She did 48, maybe possibly 49, almost days of no contact. And she had said, I caved. So she was honest. I appreciate that. That helps us understand each other where we are in the healing process. Uh, she had therapy today and uh, she said she caved. So I did send her a response. Hopefully she'll comment below for us on whether that caving contacting the person happened before or after therapy. So we're going to talk about what could happen in therapy, whether it's for ourselves or if we go to therapy with a narcissist, jam-packed full of information. Uh, so we have to make sure that the therapist we are with is a good match for us. So if you're a religious person, that might be a good match. If you are non-religious, you might need a different person to relate to you. We also have to be uh, self-advocates for ourselves that we know what we believe, that we don't just write things off as I'm just whatever. I know my mom, I asked her, what do you believe? She doesn't even know. She doesn't even want to process it. So how does she lead her life? Uh, understanding what her true values are. So I know I had a friend in high school. She was 14 years old and she had a driver's license. So her mother was blind. And because of the mother's need and also the child's need to get to certain places, whether it's a doctor's office, school, after school events, whatever it is, maybe even buying school supplies, that they allowed the child to have an actual car driver's license at age 14. So we can write things off if you are a religious religious person that this is what God said, you know, stick it out for marriage and at all costs, you know, but do we look at the outside and the full capacity of what things are? Are they that black and white? Just like if she was my daughter, I'm like, sweetie, I'm blind, but you can't drive till you're 16. Did I look at everything available? So if you are a religious person, look at all the information that fits within your religion just like that lady who was blind, she looked what her options were. Her options are different than my options. I'm not blind and my daughter didn't need that. I didn't need to rely on my daughter, things like that. So she had caved and we also had to make sure that they're trained in narcissism. So she was probably going through a lot of things. What am I going to talk about today? And this is why I'm hurting. And then she starts most likely going into whether it's cognitive dissonance or rumination or self guilt or doubt or whatever is going on. But this person is in her mind that day. And whether it was before or after, it's within that vicinity. She did really good and she had this therapy session. So I'm proud of her for not kicking herself uh, up, beating herself up for caving. It's natural. That does happen. We have our ups and downs, relapses, things like that. So don't be angry with yourself. You're trying the best that you can. That's all we can ask. We also have to know that, you know, they say insanity is doing the same thing and hoping for a different outcome. So if we're sitting here constantly texting and hoping that they're going to get back to us, you know, uh, the outcome is almost always going to be the same. And even if they do reply, it's going to be to shut us up or to appease us. It's not because they love us or they understand that we're hurting. They don't care that we're hurting. They honestly don't. And it also annoys them. So it's not going to be a good relationship anyways, because they don't like our emotions. And what's sad, and this is why I don't want you to feel that it's your fault, um, is because our emotions are triggered by the way that they're lying to us, disrespe disrespecting us, and not communicating the right way. We think we have a mutual bond, but that bond is one way. And we're doing everything we can. And the disrespect that we get starts to like set us off. Like what's going on? And so be careful with the anger. You will go through anger. It is one of the five stages of grief, but don't ruin who you are and what your reputation is. It's normal to get angry. How you act on that matters. So we also want to change our mindset from I am a victim to I am a survivor. Just the little word change will change the outcome. If you say, I hope I can maintain no contact, 
you'll probably cave. If you use stern words like I will maintain no contact, you're more likely to do that. And it's a commitment we make to ourselves. So you have to decide what it is that you want. Look at how toxic the relationship, what kind of brain damage it's causing. Are you the crazy one? You know, the narcissist loves to call us the crazy one. And they're rewiring our brain into being crazy. We don't know what reality is because of the lies. And, you know, I think about schizophrenics and I had a neighbor and you could see when she would shift, like she changed color, uh, her face changed, you could see it. And she was triggered by television, also radio can't remember what else, but I had the TV on for our little girls and it was like Barney or something, but she starts hearing voices through that and you can see the change. So the, the, um, altered reality you can see would be devastating, crazy making, uncomfortable like I'm hearing voices I do I follow them are they my internal thing is it some demonic thing trying to overtake me where are these voices coming from it's a very you could see it was uncomfortable so with us we're starting to go into that kind of altered reality where it's like what do I think what do I process is this real is this fake um do I believe this person that they said this but they're telling me I said that, but I don't like that's out of my character. Why would I say that? Uh, and then we get into kind of the crazy craziness. And that's because of how they are messing with our brains. And that's all because they don't want to take accountability. So in the healing process, I am here to help you guys. Let me know your biggest struggles and I will address them. But a lot of it that we have to do is shift our mind thinking. We start thinking about, you know, procrastination. Our problem is not um, the procrastination itself. It's not the trigger. What is triggering our procrastination? It could be stress. So stress is not the, the, the problem. The problem is how we cope with what we're doing because we're going to have stress. We're going to have stress. That's not the problem. The problem is how we are handling it. And a lot of times I know I've done things because I want to control the situation, whether it's procrastination where I'm like, you know, I'm going to tell myself I don't have to do that. I don't have to do my laundry today. Technically, I don't, but I still need to get it done. And this would, let's say, be the day that I have set aside for it. Little things like that is I'm trying to control the situation as a uh, trauma response but is that to my benefit you know I have the time to go do my laundry if I just do that I feel good about it so when we start doing the little things we're showing ourselves that we have power over getting things done as opposed to power of being lazy in our lives so with our mind shift we have to give ourselves some grace understand anger is normal if we do relapse that is normal it's something you try to avoid so if you mess up don't kick yourself just try it again just like people who try to quit smoking or sticking to a diet is it's not easy but it doesn't mean you give up it doesn't mean you hate yourself or you're angry at yourself you're human so when you go through counseling, if you are with a narcissist, it is suggested that you go through counseling separately because the narcissist will do that projection, blame shifting, not take accountability. Is it going to be effective with the narcissist seeing the therapist? Most likely not. Unless they uh, have some type of devastation wake-up call, they're going to come out like they're on top. But if you do go with them, you're going to have more resentment because you're going to be angry that they won't admit what they're doing wrong. They're going to paint this picture. They're going to play the victim. But what we can do, whether you stay with your narcissist or leave them, is work on ourselves and work on maintaining the boundaries, personal affirmations, loving ourselves, loving ourselves to know 
if somebody is going to continue to disrespect us, you know, uh, how healthy is that relationship? It's causing us to go crazy. And I think about that neighbor lady, how horrible those episodes must be. An altered reality. And then I think about this is what we're going through. You know, I have a husband who loves me. Do we? Or are we um, a slave in a sense? So when we rewire our brain, it's not easy. It's a learning um, thing that a learning lesson we might have been meant to go through to bring us stronger. And it sucks. It sucks. It's like, like you know, and it's sometimes too, you're like, why couldn't you just tell me? A lot of times I've seen the people that I talk to is we don't want to accept it. I sit here and um, see word patterns that some of you guys use where I can see what the true uh, thoughts are that you're having. And, you know, we have to accept it. You know, some of you will say, I'm over him. I'm over him. I just wish he would call me. That doesn't match up. I'm over him, but I wish he would call me. Little things like that. And it's not meant to be judgmental. It's just to acknowledge what our true feelings are. And we have to do that. We can't keep being in denial. Denial is like the first stage of grief. And then we do the bargaining. And we might get depressed or angry. And then we can be accepting of what is. We can't change somebody else. But we have to change what we're going through. And that starts with loving ourselves again. Because we allowed somebody to disrespect us. We allowed somebody to lie to us or cheat on us. And, you know, it's different. Some of you guys are polyamorous. And if that's your agreement, that's your agreement. That's not going against your beliefs. Is that truly what you believe? Also, um, are you agreeing to it? Because this is just a possibility, depending on your beliefs, is you feel that this one person won't love you, that you're not enough. Because there are people that feel one person is enough. And I just uh, had a crazy weekend. Um, I, uh, there is one person who is struggling with like a possible uh, breakup kind of thing. I, I didn't get the update today, but it's kind of like the fuck you, we're done. And I'm, you know, he says that she's already grooming somebody else and she doesn't want to be with him and uh she just wants to be fuck buddies and he's still convinced that they love each other and sometimes you know people play games or things like that but if somebody tells you that's all i want from you that's all you mean to me we have to accept it whether it's the truth or not but those words be careful on the words that you say because people react to them and you will be hurt by those words so you know we have to look at how many injuries we have you know so let's say she was you know playing games and she just wanted him to chase after her whatever those are still injuries and it's also letting her know you know where your self-esteem is so we have to, you know, we can redirect someone. Are you sure you mean that? Because I'm going to act on that. You tell me I'm just a fuck buddy, I'm done. Uh, whatever fits you, who you are. But just be aware that relapses can happen. Sometimes when we try to heal, they're more on our mind. And I just thought it was something important to address. That that's normal. But that's also you addressing that situation. And I'm here to help you handle that in the right way. Stay strong. Realize that what we've done in the past did not work. And we can't keep repeating the same patterns. And whatever is meant to be will be. But we're going to put an end to this pattern of abuse. 
And that's where we're going to know what is meant for our lives. Our boundaries are going to be in place. They either stay or they go. It's not being selfish to be respected. It's not being selfish to be respected. So lots of love to you guys. Let me know how I can help you. Topic requests are welcome. Hit that like button. Helps with the algorithm to get this channel to grow as soon as I get 5,000 subscribers.